hello welcome to technolinux today this is a video an educational video regarding the difference between analog and digital signal so this video will explain you the difference between analog and digital first talking about analog what do you mean by an analog signal if you consider this to be an x axis and this to be a y axis then you may consider this signal this arbitrary signal as a, this this uh, waveform as a signal where if you consider that y axis car carries voltage and x axis represents time then we can define that a voltage at this instant instantaneous time is certain voltage say 3 volts and the time at this point is 0.2 seconds 0.2 milliseconds for example so if you consider this to be an x-axis and a y-axis representation and you consider this to be a signal signal is nothing but a storage or a, 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 a signal is nothing but uh, but an energy that can be stored and that carries some information in the form of heat light or maybe sound basically sound because sound is the most common form of signal that we use in day-to-day -day life even if you say that light coming from Sun is a signal you can you are correct even if you say that the heat that you get from uh, uh, a heat detector circuit for example is a signal because when you get for example a heat detector circuit if you get heat from it then it indicates that your heat detector has reached up to a certain limit of heat and now it's emitting the signal which will tell you that heat has reached to that limit so you can see that heat is acting as a signal at that moment of time whereas in electronics we consider signal as the movement of electrons that can carry information so signals can be represented in two forms basically an analog form and a digital form the analog form is in front of you this is an analog form the question arises from here what's the difference between analog and digital that we are going to watch today in this video this is an analog signal So, I have shown you what's the meaning of analog signal. Now let's now let go further and see something new, which is different from analog. Now, if you consider this x-axis and this waveform once again, and if you consider the volts over here and time period over here, then you can and if you if you divide it in blocks like this. I'm just making lines arbitrarily. I'm not taking any scale or something. I'm just marking them to show you. Okay, so if you make these sections like this, okay, so you can see that this section of this section represents a certain time this section represents a certain time this section represents a certain instantaneous time at this section at this section you can see at this section you can also see that there is a time over here similarly for each and every section that I have made you can see a time limit that has been assorted to it so this is basically a discrete time signal so you understand the difference between an analog signal and a discrete time signal this is the first step in moving towards digital signal
so a discrete time signal has certain time limits which can be used to find your signal for example if you say that this is and that that that, that this instant of time is 0.7 milliseconds and this is 0.9 milliseconds so what you can say that the your if your information lies over here then you can exactly say that your information lies at 0.7 to 0.9 milliseconds so that when you transmit the signal you can always send a message to the transmitter that you have that the transmitter have to receive a signal from 0.7 to 0.9 this is an advantage over an analog signal because over here if for example your signal is contained only in this section and uh, you have to transmit this signal to the transmitter then you don't have any you don't have any kind of means by which you can specify that your signal lies only within this range and you have for your information to get transmitted to the transmitter you have to transmit this whole signal so that's a very very advanced that's a very great advantage of discrete time signal over analog signal when we move on to digital signal you can see further modifications So discrete time signal we can say is an intermediate stage between analog signal and digital signal. Now let's open the cover and see what digital signal has for us. So again I'm making the y axis, the, uh, the, ti the time axis, T, V voltage. So if you consider this waveform once again over here I have already okay so let's not waste our time and let's use this only as our signal because I have to show you what we have to do with this okay so if you see this signal if you consider this x axis and y axis once again so this is the time axis this is the voltage axis so over here you can see that the discrete time signal is is being formed now when I say a digital signal digital signal means this you divide this voltage axis you divide the voltage axis into sections once again so this is a very very advantageous thing over other kind of signals and I'll tell you why it is okay so if you consider this as 1 volt this as 2 volt and again this as 3 volt now when you transmit your signal you can see that if your information lies within this section then only you have to transmit this signal if your information lies within this signal then you have to transmit only this signal that means you can convey a message to the transmitter that your signal lies only above 3 volts and at this certain instant of time now why it is advantageous over analog and discrete time signal if you move on to analog signal the analog signal is very good if you consider it in us in some view because you don't know the whole picture what's happening the analog signal if you see can uh, transmits each and every part of the signal then what's the harm in doing so the thing is when you transmit the whole waveform there's not just waveform going out 
the the universal signal that is noise also gets added to it and your signal becomes rough that leads to that leads to lo loss of signal and distortion that's the main reason why analog signal is not used in today's world the second major disadvantage analog signal contains the whole inform analog signal has to be transmitted with the whole signal so the thing is when you transmit the whole signal the energy required for transmission is also more when the energy required is more the the, the components that are required has to be more in order to transmit that energy there are various stages in transmission like the amplification power amplification when you have to handle a big signal you have to do it more <coughs> for that you require more components <coughs> and that's and that includes the cost the increasing the cost and that's a major disadvantage once again because we have to design such circuits where the cost is minimum and the functions are maximum that takes us to digital signal and the world of digital signals also in digital signal you are sure you are sure that your signal is within a certain limit so if you say that your signal is within uh, for example if your signal is within 2.75 say this is 2.75 and this is 3 so if your signal is between 2.7 is on is on 2.75 you can give a limit that your signal is between 2.5 to 3 so even if there's a loss in transmission for example if your signal decreases from 2.75 to 2.2.65 then also you can see that this block contains information so that your information is safe and secure that's a major disadvantage that's a major advantage sorry that's a major advantage for digital signal so you so i hope that you understand why analog is not better than digital and why digital is considered as better than analog so i hope that i have been able to uh, to solve your problem and solve your query so thanks for watching this video if you like this video please click thumbs up and subscribe this channel thanks for watching this video once again and see you in, see you in the next video